Hi, I am Dr. Prishnu, Consultant Pediatric Surgeon and Pediatric Urologist, Rainbow Hospital, Vijayawada. Today, I am going to discuss about esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistula. These are the congenital GI anomalies wherein the esophagus and trachea don't develop and separate normally. They are seen in 1 in 3500 live births. The exact cause of this is not known, but several environmental factors and genetic factors are known to contribute to it. There are many risk factors out of which maternal alcohol and smoking, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus and increased maternal age and some drugs such as methimazole and diethylgabestrol are known to be uh, associated with it. Nearly 1 in 40 can be 40% of them can be detected antenatally by the presence of the esophageal pouch in the cervical region in antenatal scans or the presence of the polyhydramnions or the absent fetal fluid in the stomach because the child cannot swallow the amniotic fluid. There are five different types of the tracheoesophageal fistula out of which type C is the most common which is seen in 86% of the cases where the proximal pouch is atritic and the distal pouch is attached to the trachea and second most common type is a pure esophageal atresia where there is only esophageal atresia and there is no communication with the trachea. Third most common type is type E or also known as a type H fistula where there is no esophageal atresia but there is communication with the trachea. Other rare common types are the type B where the proximal esophagus attaches to the trachea or type D where the proximal and the distal esophagus are attached to the trachea along with esophageal atresia. Coming these, coming these, most of these tracheoesophageal fistulas are associated with anomalies. The anomalies being highest with pure esophageal atresia and least common with H type of the fistula. But the most common anomalies associated with these are the bacterial anomalies out of which cardiac is the most common followed by the genita urinary and the GI. Out of the cardiac anomalies, VST is the most common associated anomaly. For the confirmation, most of these can be confirmed in the newborn period. When we pass a red rubber tube, it doesn't pass beyond 10 to 12 centimeters from the upper lip, from the mouth. Or rarely, uh, if we pass a small tube, it coils in the upper pouch of the esophagus. Coming to the clinical symptoms, they present mostly with the excessive salivation in the newborn period due to the pulling of the secretions in the pharynx or choking while feeding or unable to feed and sometimes they may present with cyanosis and respiratory distress and they may present to us with abdominal distension when there is associated with a large tracheoesophageal fistula. And most of them may present with pulmonary compromise mainly due to the reflux of contents in the stomach into the trachea or the pulling of the secretions in the upper pouch may cause aspiration into the lungs. So sometimes excessively distended stomach may cause a splinting of the diaphragm further leading to the pulmonary compromise. They can be detected mostly on the x-ray where we can see the coiling of the tube or when we give a small amount of the water soluble contrast it can be seen in the accumulated in the upper pouch. Coming to the treatment, surgery is the only option wherein the esophagus is mobilized proximally and the distally the esophageal fistula is cut down and both of them are anastomosed. Sometimes they did in case of the pure esophageal atresia or in the long gap esophageal atresia, a delayed primary or a staged procedure can be done. Staged procedure in the form of the esophagostomy and gastrostomy later followed by the full through procedure. Thank you.